Hi everyone, my name's uh, Tom Donnelly. Welcome. Uh, first of all, I just want to say the title of this talk is Journeying Through the Viewfinder. I've taught workshops based on that title uh, from uh, half, half days, full days, four weeks, etc. So this is really a, a quick overview of a talk and presentation on how I approach my creative life. And it's really about how to see, uh, ultimately. Um, so that's, I just want to kind of like get that out there. This is not a tech talk. This is about soft and fuzzy things like creativity. And uh, so, and my, my hope and desire is to kind of introduce some, some ideas about how I approach things to open up the scope of what might be possible, uh, what else you might be considering, to look at your relationship with your, you know, with you, with your camera in your hand, and how you connect with your subject, and uh, you know, one question that I'm going to throw out before I, I start talking is, how do you slow down time? Just think about that question: is how do you slow down time when you're shooting? And we'll pick up that thread as we go along. Um, where I want to begin, I, I really been thinking a lot about this. Uh, you know, what I can be saying and what Debbie from uh, B&H had asked me to, to cover on how all these things can come together. I'm gonna really do a, uh, I was asked to do kind of an overview of my work and, and the evolution of it, but it also is a good arc for uh, the talk on creativity and you can see different aspects of who I am. Um, I've been a filmmaker and a photographer, so it's, I've had a very interesting arc uh, to my creative life. Um, but it all began with um, my family life and my father and my parents who were actors. And I just want to get this full screen here. Uh, whoop, nope. I don't know how we got, oh, there we go. We magically had all the borders disappear before, and now I don't know how, how that <laughs> Nope. Oh, well. Um, my father was a Broadway actor, uh, and he did TV and film. And uh, this is a headshot I did for him which he used and he insisted on putting my info on the side. I said, Dad, it's your shot, don't worry about me. But he, he loved the shot and he used it uh, to the end of his uh, career. Um, by the time I was, if, if you've been to my website, you'll, you'll know this next little tidbit, which is by the time I was two and a half, I was in 42 states. My father was in a national touring company of a Broadway show, uh, Unsinkable Molly Brown. Uh, he had just finished the Broadway run and and uh, we, uh, we went on the road. So that's kind of like what I was born into was this creative life and my whole life I was, all I remember when my dad was talking about creativity and what it was all about and you know, seeing my fa father going on stage and I, ultimately when I was seven my first professional job was in a play with my dad. And I was in second grade and uh, I'd, I'd uh, come home from school, put on my uh, my uh, peasant Russian outfit for a Caucasian chalk circle by Bertolt Brecht. And at 10 o'clock, I was awakened and dragged to the theater and made my appearance and came home. <laughs> so um, saved my first money towards college from that gig. Um, so, so, you know, the, we talked about creativity all the time. And, and my father always used to say, the best lessons in art are the best lessons in life. And, you know, he says, as an actor, one of the most important things as an actor is to be present. Is to be present, to be aware, to be present to what's going on in front of you, what's around you, to listen to and be engaged. It's the same thing in life, you know, to be present. That, that's, uh, you know, kind of a spiritual practice to remain present. And so he, we would always talk about these concepts and it was always these koans he would plant in my head about these facets of, of art and life and, and such. So 
this is, all my work has, has been ultimately about the creative process. Um, when I started, uh, I, I really fell in love with photography when I was a kid. And I ultimately was, you know, the yearbook photographer. I had a twin brother. We shared a dark room. And we shot a lot. And that's, that was my training, was shooting. I didn't go to college for photography. I'm self-taught. I took one course in eighth grade. And uh, I, I took that with an Instamatic. And the following summer, I repeated the course with my first 35 millimeter uh, SLR. This was the uh, very first concert I remember. Uh, just, I just screwed that up. It went out of full screen. Anyway, this was my very first concert. I was a uh, uh, freshman in uh, high school. I just scanned this today at uh, Kinko's. It's really dirty. Um, Don McLean at Rhinebeck Music Festival in 1973. Um, just a few shots from that. This one's not my favorite, but what I love about it is you can see the, the time and the, the, and actually what, I, I'm on the stage, you know. Can you get on stage now and shoot? No. Access is different. But here I am, first gig out, I'm shooting with everyone else, Don McLean at Rhinebeck Music Festival. So um, from, from that, I, you know, then a few years later, this is at the other end of high school, Shooting Pete Seeger, the Hudson River Revival was in my hometown of Croton, and I'd walk there and shoot the musicians. So this is like 1977. <clears throat> and shooting friends and musicians. This is my twin brother with his daughter. And I, you know, I'm, this, I remember when I was shooting this many years ago, probably or mm, mid 80s um, so I'm, I'm kind of jumping a, ahead but you know this is a two-hour talk um, I realized that when I sh when I was engaging in this moment certain things started coming present to me like oh I can break the frame a little bit you know I, I was like feeling feeling like I needed to move the camera I needed to do something and and so as you see here's the Hudson River behind me it's at an angle and I'm focused on my brother, and his daughter's focused on me. And it also was creating an interesting dynamic where it wasn't just I'm shooting them, but there was this engagement that I was feeling uh, that I was called to. I just felt it. I was like, oh, I got to shoot that. And I framed it so that she was seeing me. you know. And, and I started exploring and becoming more aware of what my impulses were. This is really a talk about, you know, becoming aware of all your senses. It's essential to become aware of all your senses. We talk a lot about technology. We talk about all the new developments in cameras. The bottom line is, whatever camera you've got, learn how it works, whether it's a phone or whether it's the latest SLR. It's about your relationship with your camera and your connection to your world. Let that tell you what you need to know. And how do you start opening up to that? Is start, first of all, I want everyone to just take a few deep breaths. And I, you know, I don't care if this feels woo-woo or not. I want everyone to just like, come on, come with me, wake up. Breathe, just take a few deep breaths. Let's get present in the room. This is about being aware. So I want everyone, come on, I'm gonna take a breath. And as you're breathing, I just want you to sense the room and the people around you. Listen to the sounds, you can hear the muffled sounds out there the humming of the AC, the heat of the lights or not. That's a good start. <laughs> so the first thing, like another way to, to look at this photo, you know, is uh, I, I said it in this one presentation, your friends and family don't deserve the firing squad. You know, it's like, oh, shoot. 
I got to get the whole body shoot. No, they don't deserve that. Why? I mean, people say, well, that makes a good photo. I'm going, who says? Who's they? This is your photo. This is your life. This is you connecting to the people in your world. Whether it's an assignment or whether it's personal work, I don't care. I shoot because I want to connect to my world and discover something about it and sense something about it and learn something about it. When I shoot music, we'll get to that, well, it's throughout this whole presentation. If I'm shooting a concert and I'm not enjoying the music, I put the camera down. Then I pick it up once I'm reconnected to the music. If I'm feeling like I'm trying to grab stuff, I put the camera down. It's not about that to me. Sometimes on assignment it is. When you've got three seconds to do something, I'm not saying these are absolutes, but these are the general thing, places where I'm coming from. So to me, the primary thing is my connection to what I'm shooting. And all the technical stuff is in the background. And again, half of you could probably teach me more about technical things than me, you. I use what I know. I learn how to work with my gear. I learn how to work with my gear. So it's fluid. So I can respond instantaneously to things. <clears throat> Here's some more music shots I've done. I shoot, I've shot over the years. I've kind of bounced around. I've, I've been in uh, the film business. I've worked on over 100 commercials. I've worked on many independent features. I've worked, uh, you know, with uh, my first film was uh, with Brian De Palma um, as executive producer. I've worked on films with Oliver Stone. Small job um, on, on my part. Um, and, you know, I've been around. And so I went from filmmaking, then I went into publishing. And when I was in publishing, I started uh, exhibiting my photography. So things just kind of swirled around. And then I got back in the film business. And, and you'll see in a moment that I was shooting photography in the film business. But in the meantime, I just continued to shoot what I loved, which is music, performance. There's Bob and Bruce, Aaron Neville. Amazing playwright and old friend of the family, George Firth, who worked with Sondheim. Then I also, wherever I traveled, I, I did exhibitions of, of uh, statuary and fountains in Italy. And when I, 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 when I took this shot, and you know, I'm going to just kind of pause at different moments here and just engage in some, some thoughts here. You know, when, when I look at a, a statue or, or, or a fountain, I think for me, this is me. Everyone's going to have their own thing. I look at that and I see performance. I'm engaging it like this is Bruce Springsteen. You know, I'm, I'm like looking at it. I'm looking at the angle. I'm feeling the, the, the composition like it's, it's on stage. That's how I bring it. Maybe it's because I was born on stage. You know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure it is. Everyone's going to have their own context. What, what speaks to you? How do you relate to, to things? What, what, is, what jazzes you? In when you're connecting to your subject. For me, I, I look at that, I see performance. And to this day, when I connected to that, when I was shot that in Italy, in Rome, to this day, I still have the feeling of what I had. What, and what, what I see that happens as I continue to look at my own process is when I connect with that, or if it's a person, it's, it's almost like, to me, when I'm looking th th through the viewfinder, you know, there's prose, there's poetry. As Goethe said, only within limitation is the master manifest. With the camera, we've got a viewfinder, or at least you used to have a viewfinder. A lot of <laughs> digital cameras now have, you know, the digital display. But in looking through the viewfinder, it's to me haiku. And what am I choosing to put in the frame? And there's this tension I feel, and my, my hands are getting all tingly when I think about it, that there's a dynamic, there's energy lines, there's, there's things that compel me to frame in a certain way or to even look at the subject. 
And I, as over the years, as I've become more and more aware of my own process, I just hone into that and let that guide me um, and engage in that way. So when I feel that, and I, it's almost like something clicks into place. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. And, and it's letting my, my, all my senses guide me. We use our intellect, that's there. That's great to support everything we do. But if we're all mind and no heart, no sense, no energy, we're, we're, en we're, we're all vibration. Let's just give it up, man. Let's just, let's just acknowledge that. We're all, we're all energy and vibration. So what is it that we're connecting to? What are we feeling? What is it about? And I feel like when I connect in the way that it feels right, then all of a sudden I'm, it, it's like there's this connection that's been made. And I'm feeling an energy that I haven't felt before or it's distinctive to that experience. So it's like opening up a door and letting, letting the energy flow for me. Now, <laughs> I'll tell you something else about me and you'll see as we come. I, I've spent many years uh, also working with uh, indigenous shamans from around the world. I co-founded a group called the New York Shamanic Circle uh, 15 years ago. And so I'm very much, uh, trained in approaching things energetically. But it doesn't, I mean, we're all naturally given to that because that's who we are. And it's, this talk is about opening up and being clear about your own energy, recognizing it, getting in touch with what it is that's, that's telling you, urging you, pushing you to go forward and to inspire you to pick up your camera. Does anyone have any questions, thoughts? Keep going. All right. Just want to make sure everyone's with me here. <clears throat> so I just shoot wherever I go. It's, it's what I do. And, and So whether it's landscape or performers, see again, you know, landscape to me is performance. That's how I relate to it. It's really hot in here. Is it just me? It's warm. Here's when I went into the jungle in Ecuador, and um, I was using uh, color infrared film. That's what this was, and I was, I did a, um, I connected with uh, a Shuar, the Shuar tribe in the jungle. Did healing ceremonies and such, and also in the Andes with the Quechua. So then, <laughs> so then um, in 2000, I was hired by the director of uh, 3,000 Miles to Graceland, who I knew and had worked with in New York. I was his head of development um, in 97. And I was uh, on set for that film for just under three months. And this was, uh, that's what uh, this next work is. Oops, just get the cursor out of there. Kevin Costner, and there was Kurt Russell before, Kevin Costner, Courtney Cox, stuffed alligator. <laughs> You know, like something like this, you know, it's uh, the, the production designer loved me because uh, I don't know, just I, I, he, he did so much visual stuff when you give him treats to look at, you can find new aspects to things. I, you know, I, I just went where I went, you know, it's, it's, it's opening up and not, not having a, a defined agenda for yourself. It has to look like this. It has to, that's a limitation. I go into a space and, and, and I look at what grabs me and, I, and I'm very in tune with what is, is catching my attention and saying something to me in some way, on some level, and I go with it. Oops. Ice tea, 
on the edge of the uh, set. This was, he wasn't shooting, he was just rapping on the side. Uh, it was pretty intense. And, and you just saw that quick glimpse. The next shot is from the film. It's not live, it's not real. <clears throat> it's interesting because when I showed this on, on the set after I took it, everyone on the set was like, ooh, that's beautiful. You know, I show it to anyone else, they said, they go, oh my God, that's awful. But the effect was real. Now, I'm going to pause here. You know, this is, again, this is a good illustration of how to be in the moment. You know, I didn't, I was shooting film back then, and I didn't know until I developed that I actually did get it. But I knew that if I tried to be mental about this, now, there were certain technical things I wanted to be aware of. I knew that there was a shutter lag, things like that. But I knew that there was no way for me to get this unless I trusted my instincts. And this is what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about getting in touch with your five senses, this is ultimately about training and understanding and nurturing your instinct. And letting, and in so doing, your body begins to gain an intelligence of its, of its own in terms of how to respond. So here, I knew there was one shot. There's one frame I could take, one. And there was all sorts of factors involved with the special effects, firing it and pulling him back on the, on the lead wire and, and, and all these different factors. I didn't know exactly when it was going to go. So I kind of was less interested in all the particulars, but was sensing the entire room. And I just went, you know, I'm just going to give up to my instinct here. And I had the one shot, and that's what I got. I could have missed it. I don't get every single thing. I'm not saying I'm, I'm uh, you know, uh, per perfection incarnate. But without that sensibility, without having, having some trust in my own reflexes, fed by my instinct, that would not have happened. It just it was not possible. Unless you shot like, you know, a, a video or a heavy sequential thing. Easter egg hunt. <laughs> I'll pause. <laughs> it's all right. Okay. As you were. And here's more shots from the, uh, and, and, and another case in point is the following sequence. <clears throat> now, the, the thing was that my, my role on the set was, um, was different, and I was at, at the, the juncture of some very hot politics because I was not union, but I didn't take a union job away. Actually, the union photographer who was working for Warner Brothers and I got along famously. It was other union people who were getting all pissed off. But I was on a special project to do behind the scenes. So he had rigged up like three or four cameras on automatic whatever. I used, I handheld and shot five frames and all of them I used. <clears throat> so, I mean, there's different approaches. Everyone, I encourage everyone to find what works for them. I can only share with you what my experience is and, 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 and some of the you know, aspects to that. So here's the sequence. What's coming next? It's interesting because a lot of this stuff didn't make it in the film. The, the production designer loved me for that reason because I was seeing and shooting everything that, that there was such wonderful visuals. Um, but half of them, easily half of them, didn't make them into the film. They didn't frame it the way I did. I used a wide angle lens here, you know. Um, 
And that really captivated me, the, the graphic nature of it, and seeing Kurt Russell working with the director kind of as an anchor for the piece. Um, those flags didn't make it into the film. <clears throat> First day of production, they were giddy like little puppies talking about the film. That was at least the beginning of the film. Here's more music. Chris Christopherson and Ani DeFranco. Richie Havens. Dave Matthews. Bruce. <laughs> Duh. This is a Tuvan throat singing group called Hunhar Tu. <laughs> And then we get into some uh, more uh, some nightlife work that I've been doing more recently in the last couple of years. I've really um, it's interesting, you know, the evolution of of um, all this stuff is what fascinates me. Even though this is like a different subject matter, I love the whole notion of people coming together. I love the notion of 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 synergy of how uh, a community is created and, and what goes on. And it's all part of the creative process for me. You know, it's, it's whether it's on a film behind the scenes for three months seeing people kind of make magic, or just letting off steam and, and, uh, and finding a moment to express themselves in a different way. I'm drawn to, you know, music where, where people are at their peak. You know, I, I, I look for what excites me. I'm a musician myself, so I, I know the feeling of playing piano and, and performing. Um, and I just, I, that's what excites me is when I'm shooting Bruce Springsteen, for example, and I'm looking at him and I'm connecting, I'm feeling some, you know, I'm connecting with what I feel is perhaps an aspect of what he's experiencing, but in my own way, how it communicates to my life. But I'm feeling that energy. When I'm tapped in, when I'm when I am in the moment, I feel I feel the power of that performance in a whole different way. So, but seeing people come together, I'm always fascinated by interactions. It doesn't matter what the subject matter is for me. So let me come back to the question for a moment. So how do you slow down time? How, how do you slow down time in your worlds? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Okay, it's a good question. For me, I'll just say, you know, what I've discovered for myself. When I put my attention on something, and I really focus on the nuances of, of something. If I'm looking at someone and I really pause, it's not about like working hard at, it's more allowing, being present to again, coming back to the whole thing of presence. When I'm present to Bruce Springsteen or to someone dancing or whatever it is, when I'm present and I'm focused on the nuances of what's going on or expressions and body language, literally, it's, it's the most fascinating thing. I find that time slows down. They don't slow down. It's not like a slow-mo movie as much as it is there's so much time. Like, you know, I, I, I remember taking a photo of a friend of mine and his mom, and they're in the middle of a big belly laugh. Um, you know, it, it was a fleeting moment. It's just like all of a sudden they burst and it was over, you know? When I'm focused on a nuance, I see things coming. I see an, I plug into the arc of an emotion. I can feel it coming. 
Why? Because it's right there. This is not mysterious. It's about allowing. It's about recognizing that this is possible, that everyone, we all have that. I'm not special. It's about recognizing, though, and allowing yourself to slow yourself down. That's why I had you breathe before. Because without breathing, without being centered, without being present, you won't see the arc of things. You won't see the flow, the emergent. I, you know, I can see something beginning, and then it's coming. You know, so that's how I. That's how I slow down time, <clears throat> is by paying attention, but not in a intellectual, forced, focused, stressful way. The exact opposite, in a very relaxed, aware, connected way. Does that make sense? Totally. To it? Yes? Yes? Yes. Can I say an amen, somebody? Good. Amen. Yes? Wouldn't any still shot do that? I'm sorry? Wouldn't any still shot stop time? That's, well, any still shot is going to stop time. But I'm talking about slowing down time in the process of creating that still shot so that you can connect to a peak of a moment or connect to the moment aspect of the moment you're looking for not necessarily what i am some other question over here yes Right. Isn't it like being more focused in a way? It's being focused. It's being focused, yes. It's being it's being aware. That's ultimately it. I have an analogy where baseball players lose the baseball because they're losing the focus. Yeah, because yeah. They, yeah. He's saying that the analogy of uh, baseball players losing the baseball because they lose the uh, lose their focus. If, they, if the they're ball. blinded by the light or something or whatever. Yeah. They they're not distracted. focused on the ball. No eye on the ball. They're you know. waiting for that special moment for the ball to be in the right place and right. make a connection. If you don't make the connection, you don't make contact. Right. And you're making contact here. Right. Yeah, I'm making contact here. And, and you know, it's, we go back to, you know, some of the, you know, it's all, these are all particular moments in and of themselves, whatever it is, you know? Yes? It sounds like you also are allowing this if it, you're enjoying yourself rather than not enjoying yourself. Absolutely. That's a good point. This is key. As I said, it's not about being stressed. Even when I'm on assignment and I have to work hard and fast, and I might be sweating constantly, when, when you've got that adrenaline running, uh, rushing through you, and you're burning calories, you know, <laughs> like nobody's business. I still look for that centered piece, you know, that, that centered connection to, to everything. You know, the more that you allow yourself to connect to your senses and really acknowledge them, that they are really guiding you. The more that you can train yourself to trust those instincts, and the more that you trust those instincts, one's body can take over, like with the shooting the, the guy being shot. In this kind, I remember, <laughs> this is just like in the last year, I remember shooting something like this, one of these shots with a similar, you know, uh, uh, you know, blurry background and, and such. I remember I was shooting, and all of a sudden, I, my body, I, like I didn't, I, I, I like I moved the camera. I was like, oh, I ruined the shot. And they're going, no, I just created the shot. You know, like I, I, I didn't even, I wasn't even thinking. I just moved the camera and assert, look at that. You know, I just, my body involuntarily took over and, and, and took an action that translated my connection to the subject. That's the core of what I'm talking about.
Yes. It seems like you, you need to be able to uh, stay focused when you're multitasking. Mm -hmm. Because that's something like you're showing concert shots. And I know when I'm at a concert, uh, lots of times I'll, I want to hear this song, so I'm not going to take pictures. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, where I can't uh, have that multitasking type thing. And it sounds like that's something that you're, you've gotten around. Absolutely. I take it to the other direction, actually, because sometimes, you know, when there's a lot of activity going on in front of the camera, I will not be looking at it specifically. I might be focused right in front of it. Like if, if there's 10 people there and a lot of things going on, I might be f focusing my attention right here. Why am I doing that? Because I'm trying to feel just, just like I was saying with, a, with an expression or a moment, I'm trying to feel the arc of things. I'm trying to feel how what, the dynamic, because there's always, it's, it's fascinating. When you're, I, I learned how to take group shots in high school for yearbook. You know, it's like I learned that I couldn't focus on every single person to make sure that everyone was, you know, looking good or that their, you know, eyes were open or, whatever, you, you take extra fr frames to make sure everyone's eyes are open. But the only way to, to take a group shot is to focus in front and, and get a sense. And while I'm engaging with people, you know, uh, to elicit or solicit, you know, certain response or emotion, I, I'm feeling the whole thing by, by almost not even looking at it, but by focusing in front of it or at the big picture or, as you're saying, the entire space. So I love shooting while music is going on because that's what it's about for me is, is that connection to the music and to the performer and what their experience is and why they're performing because it's, that's who they are, pure, pure, on, on stage doing their, their thing, you know? And that's what I want to connect to is that, that juice, that mojo. And that's what I, that feeds me. Yes? Is the experience different for you when you're not shooting people? No. It's, well, it's, di it's different in different ways, but as I said, like when I'm shooting landscape or statue, it, it's the most amazing thing. When I'm shooting statues or fountains or something, I, I, it could be Bruce, I mean, it's not the exact same thing, but I'm connecting to an, an expression. It's, it's a gesture, it's, which is a distilled thing, and it's like, wow, I got that shot, and then we went, oh, it's freaking stationary. You know, it's like, <laughs> I was almost like, how did I capture that moment? Well, you know, it's stationary. You know, I think it's alive, you know? <laughs> it's like, I'm not, it's gonna blur, I'm gonna miss it, they're gonna blink, you know? But it's a, a statue, you know? I'm connecting to it <laughs> like it's breathing. Um, so I have my own experience with it. You, you might have a different one, whatever it is. But that's, I relate to whether it's statues or, or landscapes or whatever. The, fairly similar, you know, and it's really connecting with the energy of what's in, you know, what the subject re represents to me. Any other? My yes. question is very light, but it's more like, that, that it, is it different for you when you're shooting an assignment or not? Because most of those are assignments, right? And we come here all the time to hear photographers like you, and we mm -hmm. discuss this a lot, because the motivation is because you have a big assignment, it's going to be print. Yeah, no, it's not why I shoot, though. It's not why I shoot. I mean, this is, I'm, you know, I have the same experience with this as, uh, as I do with personal projects. Yes, I want to make sure there's coverage, so I'll, I'll, I will use that assignment hat to make sure I'm hitting my marks and get the coverage I want and, you know, make sure that I'm connecting to the, all the different aspects they want me to connect to to tell the story. But I make it my own. The key is it, it's, you know, it's like, as they say, if there's only one flavor like vanilla or if offered vanilla, it, it's, it's about like, well, do you choose it or not? If you choose an assignment, then you got to make it your own in terms of how you work. I mean, you don't want to like shoot for Coca-Cola and shoot like, you know, Andy Warhol unless, if they, unless they want it, you know what I mean? Like, you are who you are. Bruce Weber shoots advertising, fine art, it's all the same. It's, it's dogs, black and white dogs, uh, you know, it's, whether it's in a gallery or on an ad, he's, they have hired him to shoot Bruce Weber style, right? Does that? But he's hired, that's the point. 
And so what's your point about that, though? Like the motivation to get a great shot is to have a great excited assignment. Yes, and but but how does that change the, the creative personal, process? The, person, the personal assignment. Can everyone hear her, so, or, or should I do, need to repeat? The personal anything? work. It's uh, like one percent of your whole life. No, it's not. Okay, not for me. Wait to know then. I n I don't stop shooting. I shoot all the time. I just I, I bought here. Here's a plug for B and H. I bought <laughs> a new compact camera, a high end point and shoot Fuji X10. I, it's in my bag now. I, I carry it wherever I go. I found that I wasn't carrying my, my Canon you know, 5D Mark II with me because it was heavy. So now I have a, a pocket camera and I'm shooting a whole new body of work. I'm constantly shooting. Because why? Not because I have to. Because I want to. Because it, that's why I do it. It's because I love it. So there, uh, you'll see a shot in, shortly. I, I did this, my first assignment for the New York Times they, they sent me to a pub to shoot uh, Irish traditional music, trad session music, a week before St. Patrick's Day. And um, I walked in the pub. There was like eight musicians in a circle, in the dark, in a corner. <laughs> and I'm going, this is my first assignment for the New York Times. I, I, I got to come away with something. Like you're saying, I'm on assignment. I got to produce the results. So I was, I was just like, all right, here we go. I go to the manager, turn up some lights, popped on my flash for some fill, climb up over some tables to get the access point. But then when I'm shooting, I'm shooting in the way that I always shoot. I connect to what's there. I got to clear my palate with some sorbet, if you will, mental sorbet, to get present. I pause. I breathe. That's why I keep on telling you to breathe. I pause. I breathe. I get present. And I look at the scene. What, what is it telling me? What am I getting from it? And respond accordingly. Does that make sense? Yes. Say that your relation to being present, mindful in the moment mm -hmm. can relate back to your father's work as an actor. Absolutely. I mean, in term, well, not not to his work, yes, but to our dialogues about you know creativity and 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 all that. It's as I said, I was I was born in the crucible of of uh, a creative family and and a creative exploration, if you will, because we, were, we would be up at 2 o'clock in the morning talking about this stuff all the time, all the time. You know, it was just constantly looking at different facets, and, and he's talking about his experience on being in a show or, or doing whatever, and, you know, we were constantly mulling this over. It was something that was really mattered, because it's really about how do we experience our lives, right? If you think about it, we're artists, we're creators. What is creation? I mean, that's also spiritual. I, I, I can't disconnect creativity from my spiritual, spirituality. And, and to me, spirituality is about being present and being connected to the energy of life. And we can go, that's a whole other conversation. But just to just kind of bring those subjects together, I, I can't separate the two because you're creating a world. That's what we do when we're in life. We're creating our life. How do you create your life? It's about focus. It's about intention. It's about how, you know, you, you, your life unfolds by cr creating a context, a chosen context, you know, for intentionally creating, you know. We're intentionally creating as artists. Yes? Hi. Um, would you talk about the, you know, what you, you, you touched on earlier about artists flourishing in different, difficult uh, circumstances, yeah. like the artists that flourished during QI. Will right. you just talk about that uh, generally? I'll, do, I'll speak gen generally, which relates to this conversation, um, uh, which is that, to me, the thing that, that compelled me to start making that documentary, aside from, I mean, aside the fact growing up with an actor, parents, 
who went through that time and I heard the stories of that time. The thing that compelled me to make that, because I also knew Howard De Silva, who was Ben Franklin in 1776, he was in the Blue Dahlia, he was in a lot of different things. As you can tell in the film, like with Ruby D saying, everyone was hiding under the bed when the subpoenas came out. He was like, where is he? Give it to me. You have no right to do this to me. He determined what was, what was his parameter for how to engage in life. He was like, they don't, ha they don't have any control over me. They might tell me I can't work, but he flourished more than, I, when I look at his bio, it's like twice as long during the blacklist than it was before, the decade before. Why? Because he saw it as an opportunity. When he was blacklisted, very publicly, and made a, a scapegoat, he said, this is great. I don't have the distractions of Hollywood anymore. I can go back to my roots and connect with the material I love. So what did he do? He did concert readings with Ruby D, Ossie Davis, Morris Kanofsky, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, anyway, and they did concert readings of their favorite literature, Mark Twain, Sholem Aleichem. He ended up doing an off-Broadway show called The World of Sholem Aleichem. And that was before really off-Broadway was, uh, was formed. What happened? That became successful. Then Tevye and his daughters, and that became the source material for Fiddler on the Roof. He added to the culture, to our culture, about Jewish culture because of his passion. Because he said, this is what I want to do. That's, a, that's an excellent thing that I'm no longer working in Hollywood. You know, who says that? That's what fascinated me. So I see the same thing here is with everything. It's what are you creating? He chose, the thing that, that I loved about that is because it really addressed the whole blending of art, creating art, creating your life. Looking at your work, it's really good. Everybody loves it. But you as the artist, though, you say it's kind of stagnant. I'm not going anywhere new. How do you, can you get to a... How do you get to that experimental state where you want to go into new worlds? Well, for example, you know, it's, it's looking at everything as an opportunity, just like what we were just talking about. It's like what I just said when, when, when uh, Time Out said uh, only horizontals and I shoot a lot of verticals, I was like, well, this will be interesting. Let's see what I, I, I will find out from that. Um, so it's looking at everything as an opportunity. It's looking at things with fresh eyes. And yes, I, I mean, I think every artist, every single artist and every single medium hits, hits those walls. And it's, you know, then I start, uh, it's like getting the, um, the pocket camera really opened up a lot of things for me because it was, it was different equipment. I had to learn it. It, it, it. I had to have a different relationship to it because it didn't respond in the same way as my other camera. And I could take it wherever I went in, in cabs. I was shooting out of cabs. I'm shooting wherever, wherever I'm walking. And I'm just letting myself go. So but it. Even if you feel insecure or you, there's fear in you, sometimes I have fear going into new, new worlds because I like to not change. I'm comfortable. But I, I think the better work is when I'm uncomfortable. Uh huh. Well, it's. And there's fear there. There's fear of going into that new world. So it's becoming aware of your environment and not letting that fear overwhelm you, I guess. Well, it comes back to what, what this dialogue is about, which is learning to understand that you have more senses than, let's say, your intellect about something. Your intellect's saying, oh, fear of change, right? I'm talking about getting back into your body, getting into your senses, understanding the nuances of how how you experience things, because I guarantee you, every single one of us here, because we're, we're all human, when you're having an experience, you, your body is sending you signals in so many different ways, it's in different, I mean, like whether it's oral or, or kinesthetic or, or what have you, from, from every point of your body. Beginning to connect to that will shift your in, you know, or at least try it, I think would shift your experience of fear of change to what is my body telling me? What am I, how am I sensing my world? 
because there's a different exploration. It's not about, I don't want to make a fool of myself by doing something different. It's about what can I connect to anywhere I go, at any time, by trusting my instincts, by sensing. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a different exploration. Does that make sense? OK, let me just see what else I've got here, and then we can keep on yakking. There's more timeout stuff. This is the New York Times shot that I was telling you about. As you can see, I mean, this was all dark. There was no light. And the, the best access point was uh, <laughs> remote, to say the least. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that ultimately ran a third page in the weekend art section. Now here, I threw in some stuff. We're getting near the end of the, the visual presentation here. But these I took with my phone. You know, it's so funny. I, I'm on assignment, and I'm shooting, and I sh I'll show someone a photo, and they go, oh, great camera. <laughs> well, I, and I always go, you mean great eye? You know? <laughs> but then, <laughs> then I get the same thing when I shoot with my phone. I shoot, and they go, oh, great phone. <laughs> what am I, freaking chopped liver? Like, where do I come into the picture any anywhere, you know? So, this is really to underscore the point, know your gear. Know your Android. Know your iPhone. Know how it works. So when time comes, you can just shoot. You know, This is just me on Chelsea Piers. There's another day, a month later. You know? See, I'll tell you about like, different things. Here, I shot this two different ways, right? I went. I shot it horizontally, and I cropped it panoramically, kind of. I also shot it vertically. Not for time out? No. <laughs> no, exactly. I get to do that then. But I don't know. I like them both. They, they tell me different. I, I sense different things from them, right? Is one right or wrong? I don't know. I mean, it depends upon the context, too. But just playing. And this I shot with the, my, my high-end uh, point and shoot, you know? And that's exactly how I shot it. There's cold play with my point and shoot. <clears throat> so let's see. Let's see if there's things I have missed here, because we, we still have time here. Oh, yeah, I also want to show you uh, my current project, which is also a video. But um, let's see. So I mean, the really, really, the first question one, you know, it seems to me that uh, one must ask oneself is, why do you pick up your camera? I don't know if I have this. I had it in the other thing. I had some problems. Let's see. That's. Um, mm, I got it. Well, hmm, let me see if I can find this one photo without causing major upheavals here. But many uh, back in 2001, I um, I went. I was walking around New York shooting shooting photos, and where is it? I scanned it. Oh, there it is. Okay. I, I went around New York um, shooting, and I don't like to shoot stuff without having some kind of experience. I don't just like to shoot for the sake of shooting. I like to have a sense of something, and sometimes it's not always clear. Like, I had approached Houston Street and there was this billboard, and in the background was the World Trade Center buildings at the time. And I was, went to shoot and going, but why? What is that? It's nothing. And I walked away. And I got half a block, and I said, now I, apparently I need to shoot it. So I go back, like I'm being drawn, right? 
So I go back and went, yeah, but it's nothing. And I walk the other way. And then I'm called back. I just, I have this sense, well, I, I want to take that. I want to take it. You know, all right, I'll take it. All right. But I didn't quite understand it. But I, I ultimately just said, all right, I'll do it. This is, you know, it's, it's kind of subtle and kind of weird. But this, a month after 9-11, I, look, I found this photo and it kind of freaked me out a bit because it was, um, how can I get to full screen? Here we go. Whoops. No. Nope. Whoopsie. Technical difficulties. Please stand by. Uh, here we go. Well, you can see, right? So. The billboard says here, now this won't hurt a bit. And it's kind of, I felt this need to compress that message on top of the World Trade Center buildings. It's very ironic, very strange, very kind of weird. But whatever the reason, I'm not, it's not like, oh, this is the best photo ever or whatever, but I'm just talking about how this plugs into what I'm talking about in terms of. What messages are you getting? What do you, what is, what, when you're walking around or when you're on assignment, what is, what is calling to you? This is just a personal kind of, I don't know, testament to something. And it's still working on me 12 years later, you know? Um, so, you know, why do you pick up your camera? You know, what is it, what is it that, you know, commands you to, to do that, you know? Is it just because you want to, I don't know, t tell me some of the things that, that you guys, I mean, wh why do you shoot? You shoot? Yeah. So why do you shoot? Just to catch things that interest me. Mm -hmm. Right. And what does that do for you? I enjoy seeing families mm -hmm. and the whole experience. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's great. What else? Yeah. Perspective and symbolism. Perspective and symbolism. Okay. Yep. The assignments in the doorway to do that thing you love. Exactly. Yes. Well put. What she's saying is that, that the assignments are a doorway to, you know, to what I love, to an opportunity to connect um, in the way that I want to connect. I see my work as meditations, you know, it's, it's, it's a meditation. Everything is, in life is a meditation, you know. Sitting here is a meditation. Walking down the street is a meditation. Um, eating a meal can be a meditation. Um, so, and you say, what, well, really? Well, if you put your attention on it. If you put, just one sec, if you put your attention on it, just like what, you know, I'm, this whole talk is about. You put your attention on, on something, that's a meditation. When I'm shooting that, when I, the whole experience of that, it's like I'm walking away and I'm being called. That's a meditation. It's, I'm focusing on my environment. The, the camera is focusing it even further. All art is an abstraction. All art is an abstraction. Because if it wasn't an abstraction, you'd have a continuous, non-ending flow of life, right? So you're picking things out of the life flow. How do you choose that? That's a meditation. That is all these senses. This, this is getting in touch within, understanding how your senses are communicating with you and expressing that with your camera. Tell you about being in the moment. Uh, now, did I have to take a, a bunch of photos? I did. But I, sh I, I engage with this in my own way. And that was using all my senses. I took maybe 30 shots to get that. Maybe 40. But man, when it was happening, I knew it. Trust me. When the whole sky light, lights up, and, and I wasn't fully, I was like doing the whole like sensing, whatever. I had to have, I was also shooting in a certain rhythm that felt right. You know, and it's like, I, I did shoot, you know, multiples, but then I, I got it. You talk something about when you have to interact with people, like the Time Out magazine, you have somebody that 
was looking to the camera and then that those pictures they were interacting with Yes, them. yes. Can we talk about this direction maybe? Sure, sure. Because the other pictures were like celebrities, they were performing, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what she's asking about how I connect uh, to people when, when they're looking at the camera on my time out assignments. I kind of treat it like a, a mini shoot, like a three frame shoot or a five frame shoot. You know, I'm, you know, some people will, will uh, if I, if I, if someone's wearing a wild costume and they're standing like this, that could be an interesting shot in its own right. But I want to understand, like, why are they here, right? So I, I, I say, you know, I'll talk to them about that. It's like, who's your character? Give me some, give me some life in that. What, what, why are you here with, in that costume, you know? And I will have a little, you know, guided shoot with them. Um, so, and, and people in, interpret that different ways and, and what have you, and it's going to be different at different times. But um, I'm not afraid to uh, stir the pot in that regard, in terms of getting some emotion or, or um, you know, interacting with them. I'm not afraid of that. I was talking about like access. Access was the defining line. I remember when I was working at McGraw-Hill in publishing, someone introduced me, I'll come back to your question. Um, someone introduced me to a photo editor at Sports Illustrated across the street. And, he showed, and I showed him my work and he goes, this work is great. The only thing you need is access. And what did that mean? It means getting closer. It means having entree. You know, so when I'm shooting a, a timeout assignment, which is coming back to your point, and I go to shoot and I say, I'm shooting for timeout. That's a little different than if I'm just shooting for myself. As a matter of fact, it's very different in some circumstances. Um, <clears throat> what's that? I do that too. When you have to do for a big leg, no, just, Yeah, I know. Oh, but but smile. but I say that for two reasons. One, it's like saying, you know, <laughs> knock knock knock. It's the NYPD. It's declaring yourself. You're saying th this whatever I shoot is going to be out for the world. So just know that, right? But it's also saying I also have credentials to treat you decently. You know, I, like I, I know how to shoot. So maybe you can trust me for a moment here you know, to, to get an image of you out into the world. So it's, it's that kind of thing that opens up different opportunities. So when I had the access to be on that big film set, it, I, it was like I was, you know, a hog in mud, you know? <laughs> Um, I, um, I, you know, I just flourished. It just, I discovered new things about my work that I, I didn't know. You know, like it, it allowed me to crystallize things that I'd been working on f my whole life photographically. So when I had the access, I was ready. And it called forth everything in that and, and, and then some for me to um, stay, you know, engaged. You know, in, in not stay engaged. I loved being engaged, but there was all these union battles going on around me and, and all these other things. But, and, and, and some people said I'd never make it past the first day on, on set, you know, because of it. I made it through because I stayed focused on what, what it is I, I really wanted, which was to do what I love to do in the way that I love to do it. And it was an incredible opportunity. So I, I still love that body of work. It, it, was, it was quite unique. And um, I look forward to new opportunities like that. So, yes. You uh, like taking pictures of people who are like street photography. People don't know you're taking their picture to get close to them. <clears throat> they may not even want you to take their picture. Sometimes I, I, I do some street photography. I don't like, well, what I'll do more these days than, than not is when I shoot street photography, I do it more abstractly. You know, kind of in the in the vein of my nightlife stuff. I uh, I don't want to necessarily recognize people. I don't want to have those issues as much, if at all possible, so that I'm honoring them. I'm not just taking, you know, but I want to express something about what I see, and in my own way, and and create an emotional experience in some way. So I, I try not to. Uh, I, it, it's a fine line. Those things, and every photographer has to ride it. 
you know, uh, whether to be how much engaged or not, you know, or whatever. Whatever the questions are, it brings up questions. So I do some, but I, I do it in, in my own way. You were going to say something. Yes. Uh, what's your view of the trend in some shamans' practices? Mm -hmm. It's, she asked uh, that I had mentioned that I'd been trained by shamans in, in some ways. And, um, and how is that related to my photography? As I said before, I don't see there's a difference between creativity, my creative life, let me put it that way, and my spiritual life in many ways. Because they're both about intention, creation, you know, uh, manifesting vision, a world that I want, whether it's on celluloid, or used to be celluloid, now digits, uh, whatever, pixels. Um, whether it's I'm creating it out of pixels or I can walk down the street, it's still an act of creation, right? So, and one of the most important things in understanding that is where you put your focus is what's going to expand. And that's why I say when you focus on the nuances of someone, it slows down time, or at least one's experience of what Again, it's hard to describe, but by my choice of focus, that's everything in, 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 in the world of shamanism, in the world of photography. What, you, what has power in your life is what you put your focus on and what you put your intention on. That's what gains power. We can spend our, you know, our time bemoaning what's, what's wrong, but we'll just get more of that because that's where we're focused. So it's the discipline and awareness that what you put your focus on is what you're going to get more of. And so this talk is about putting your focus on what you want and to see more of it, more of it in many different ways. She's saying it's a, it's a special state of mind when you participate in shamanic things. I say it's a special state of mind when you're shooting. That's what my experience is. That's what's available, at least. And that's what I encourage you all to explore because there's so much available to us on a personal level. I mean, as an artist, absolutely. <laughs> Duck and cover. Oh my god, what's going on? Um, uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> serpentine. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I, I, I don't see the difference between the two. I don't. Anyone else? Yes? When you're on assignment, um, shooting for time out, I, I, the, the film is probably a more special type of job, but do you, um, and you said you bring your own approach to it where you can act and you get relaxed and you, you, know, and you, you respond as you respond. But do you ever, um, like, are all your shots just for the assignment, or do you sometimes shoot because you know things that you think, oh, this would be great for a project or my own? Purposes. Yes, absolutely, I do. Shoot both, sort of interchange. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You just hand in what, or you keep to yourself what are your own shots? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, like for example, with Time Out, I'll go, oh yeah, take that. There's a vertical for you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I shot a vertical. Shh, don't tell anyone. Uh, but that's for me. It's like, oh, I, I want it. That's the only way that I really see getting that the best. I'm going to shoot it because I like the shot, and that's for me, baby. Maybe going to Coppins then. Well, yeah, but uh, Rod had the better explanation uh, approach, which is uh, my my buddy here. He goes, put two horizontals together, and submit it that way. And then it's a horizontal. He's right. Yeah, two verticals together to make a horizontal. So anyway, um, anyone else? Thank you so much. Absolutely. Anyone else? All right. Well, feel free to come up and, oh yeah, I just want, oh, one quick, one quick thing. Uh, Debbie wanted me to, to just mention ASMP being on the, um, being on the board of the, the New York chapter of ASMP, the American Society of Media Photographers. I'll just say two sentences about it. If you are, serious about photography in some way, even if you're not professional, I highly recommend you check out the American Society of Media Photographers. It's a great community. It's great to get plugged in. Photographers are so traditionally lone wolves. 
so much opens up when you get in community with other photographers. It's so much more fun. You have uh, a network of people to call on to ask questions. You can also get special benefits. And with membership, no matter what level membership, you have access to two high-level portfolio reviews every year by industry you know, art buyers and that kind of thing, and discounts uh, online at B&H, and, &H and, and uh, all sorts of things. So it's a great organization. I highly recommend you check it out and hear some material. So anyway, thank you so much for coming out. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.